Hello and welcome to lecture 13 of modeling and simulation of physical systems in which we shall continue our discussion on modeling fluid power actuators. We're going to discuss electrohydraulic position servo. In this system, we are interested in controlling the displacement Z of a heavy mass M by means of the fluid energy stored in the piston cylinder over here. Inside the piston cylinder, we have a piston that is rigidly connected to the mass. And the fluid pressure difference that exerts a rightward force on this piston will transfer its force on the mass M. And that mass is experiencing an opposing force, FL. We call this a disturbance force. The fluid pressure difference, delta P0, and the flow rate, Q0, is controlled by an electrohydraulic servo valve. The description of this valve will come later. But here, all I want to say is that the electrohydraulic servo valve has input, which is current supplied by the amplifier controller. The amount of pressure difference of the fluid, that is delta P0, and the flow rate are dependent on the input current. The position of this mass Z is the same position or the displacement as that of the piston cylinder. And in this system, we have a mechanism of a electronic position feedback by means of position sensor. The position, position sensor outputs voltage EF, which is proportional to the position or the displacement of the piston inside the cylinder. The position sensor output is subtracted from the desired position C times ZD. And the difference is being amplified by the amplifier controller. As a consequence of this feedback, if the difference between the input and the feedback is small, the amplifier output I would also be small. And then that will in turn reduce the pressure difference and affect the flow rate accordingly. Our goal is to relate the output, which is the displacement of the mass, Z, with the input reference displacement, ZD or the set point displacement, ZD, as well as the disturbance force. Let us now build the model by systematically going through the blockwise description of the system. I'm first going to describe the working of this electrohydraulic servo valve. This is actually implemented as a two-stage valve, where the front end stage is the one in which an electromagnet is responsible for controlling the spool valve. That is an electromagnet controlling the pressure difference delta P naught across the piston cylinder. Now, if an electromagnet alone is responsible for generating this pressure difference, then it may not be able to generate enough magnetic field strength in other words, it may require a very large amount of current to generate this pressure difference. So to compensate for this de deficiency, we have first stage, that is stage one, called pilot valve, such as a nozzle flapper valve discussed last time. So nozzle flapper valve shall assist the electromagnet in generating enough force to generate the pressure difference. So some portion of delta P naught comes from the electromagnet current, that is I, and the other portion comes from the force or the power generated by the pilot valve. For our model, we are going to assume that the contribution of the force or the power that enters delta P naught is fixed. And we are not going to discuss this in the model. We shall 
only focus on the current uh, that is being used by the electromagnet to generate delta P0. Piston cylinder. It has a cross-section area A, and we, we shall assume that the fluid in the system is incompressible, that is beta bulk modulus is very large. The piston is a rigid body with negligible mass, that is, if mass and the piston are rigidly connected, then the combined mass is just M. We shall also assume that the opposing force or the disturbance force FL and that the force due to the pressure difference delta P0 are the only two forces acting on the piston and the mass. Then comes the amplifier controller model and in this case the amplifier controller amplifies not only the difference between the input and the feedback, that is C times ZD, where C is some constant, uh, and EF is the output of the position sensor. But it also amplifies the rate at which that difference is changing with time. So the derivative of the difference. And the amplifier controller will add up the two quantities uh, in the form of the weighted sum. Hence the output of the amplifier controller is the difference times the gain and the rate of change of difference times another gain. This times it is represented as 1 over omega d. So we need to focus on the two gains. One is GA that is just amplifying the difference. In the terminology of the control system that is often referred to as a proportional gain that is p and the gain associated with the rate of change of the difference is uh, is usually referred to as the derivative or the differential gain the model of the position sensor is particularly simple the output of the position sensor ef is taken proportional to the displacement z of the mass and h is the constant of proportionality. Furthermore, we shall assert that the position sensor has no dynamics, meaning that uh, its mass or its mechanism of sensing the position do not contribute to the dynamics of the electrohydraulic position servo. Let us now write the modeling equation starting with the equation of the electrohydraulic servo valve. We shall assume that the valve operates as a linear device. That is particularly true when we assume the small signal operation of the valve. That is when I and delta P naught uh, have small variation, hence small signal. And if under that assumption, the output of the servo valve, that is the pressure difference, is proportional to the current entering the servo valve, that is the current um, that the electromagnet inside the servo valve utilizes to generate magnetic field. Current multiplied by the pressure gain GP. So in other words, the output pressure difference delta P naught depends on the it is actually proportional to the current uh, minus the pressure drop due to the fluid resistance and in this case we are going to assume that the fluid resistance is the laminar flow resistance hence this is uh, this the first equation relates the pressure difference with the flow rate and the current and these three quantities are the time dependent quantities and the pressure gain and the fluid resistance are constant. The piston cylinder model can split into two parts, the fluid part 
and the mechanical part but we're, first we are going to look at the fluid part in this case as we have seen before several times we first write the expression for the volume the control volume so if there's a force there's a net force exerted on the piston cylinder in the right forward direction then the amount of fluid on the left hand side of the piston is the control um, is the fluid inside the control volume so what is the volume of this fluid uh, v equals to the um, area the cross section area the cross section area is a and the effective height so this height is actually changing uh, the minimum is z naught and on top of that uh, this time dependent displacement z uh, contribute to the height so the effective height is this much that this is the height z naught plus z and if we calculate the derivative of the volume which will then be used in the expression of the fluid capacitance so v dot the time derivative uh, of the volume equals the area times the rate of change of displacement z dot now we're going to use the fluid capacitance expression to relate v dot with q naught the flow rate and we know, we know the expression that is q naught equals to v dot plus volume over beta times delta p naught dot since the assumption is that beta is very very large it is very very large therefore the second term is dropped from the expression it is negligible and q naught is simply v dot hence a times z dot this gives us our second modeling equation then comes the mechanical part of the piston cylinder model in this case we are going to focus on the piston the dy dynamics of the piston connected to the mass m combining the two and writing the equation of motion using newton's second law of motion uh, we note that the two forces the one due to the pressure difference the fluid pressure difference delta p naught that is going to be the force applied by the fluid in the rightward direction and the other force is the disturbance force fl acting in the opposite direction so the difference of the two equals to the mass times the acceleration that is z double dot which provides our third equation summarizing all the modeling equations we have the one that describes the dynamics of the servo valve that relates the pressure difference with the flow rate and the current the second equation comes about due to the fluid capacitance if any that is going to relate the flow rate with the output displacement variable z the third equation describes the mechanical dynamics of the piston and the mass that relates the pressure difference with the disturbance force and the acceleration represented as the double derivative of the output displacement z and then the equation describing the amplifier controller whose output are i entering the electromagnet of the electro hydraulic servo valve is a weighted sum of the difference a uh, weighted sum of two components one is the difference between the input and the output is the czd minus ef and the rate of change of the difference between input and the output uh, input and the position feedback ef and the corresponding weights are 1 over omega d ga and 1 over omega d so we call them the proportional uh, gain and the derivative gain And we should never forget that EF, the output of the position sensor, was taken as H times Z, where Z is the displacement of the mass and H, H is constant. So combining all these five equations, we finally arrive at, which gives you a second order differential equation relating Z 
the output displacement with the desired input displacement C times CD and the disturbance force FL. In this second order system, you can easily write down the expression of damping ratio and natural frequency by doing some algebraic manipulation. But one important thing to note over here is that this differential equation relates Z with ZD as well as ZD derivative. That, that this derivative, this dot is because of this derivative term. Which is interesting because this derivative term uh, due to a modified amplifier controller is going to impact the overall response of the system that is Z. The details of how this derivative term affects the output or the response of the system will be covered in your course on control systems one. But here I have a, a homework exercise which can help you simulate and further explore its effects and its impact on the response of the system. The relevant homework exercise is the second bullet point over here. You're required to show that in this system, any sudden change in the input is going to cause a large change in the output, which means that uh, if the input suddenly changes, then the system shows a change in response or the system becomes more responsive, more sensitive to the input changes. This is only one aspect of the amplifier controller introducing the derivative gain, the D gain that was due to the term 1 over omega D times D. Again, the details will be covered in the control system course. At this stage, it will be helpful for you to explore the different types of basic control schemes such as uh, the proportional derivative uh, and proportional integral derivative control for your own understanding. And also, try to explore uh, in fact, you're required to show that the disturbance sensitivity of the system can be reduced, again, magnitude-wise, by mounting a spring on the piston. In other words, if this is the piston cylinder, then what you're required to show is that if you have a spring over here, uh, as um, was the case in the nozzle flapper valve, then this is going to reduce the disturbance sensitivity of the system. Also, your third homework exercise requires you to construct an op-amp circuit for the amplifier controller of the system. Note that the amplifier controller not only really amplifies the difference between the input and the feedback, but it also uh, it should also amplify and the amp the gain would be 1 over omega d it should also amplify czd minus ef derivative multiplied by the gain that is 1 over omega d this brings us to the end of our lecture 13 i hope you enjoyed this lecture and you may have questions. So wait till Thursday afternoon, 2 p.m. for our regular Q&A session. Till then, stay safe and have a nice day. Thank you.